All right. And uh, and we're in Tucker. Amen. <laughs> we're looking forward to uh, to a good study tonight. I have some uh, some very interesting things to to uh, to bring up about the ten plagues tonight. Have you ever have you ever thought about those plagues that uh, God brought upon the Egyptians? Uh, you know they they were they were some awful things, and they were some terrible things, and uh, and they were terrifying things. But yet God was uh, was in it all, and God was doing a work. He was trying to do a work in the life of Pharaoh, but Pharaoh wouldn't listen. He kept hardening his heart. And a lot of the times, God was hardening Pharaoh's heart. And so it was a, uh, it, it was a strange thing. But there, there's, there's a sevenfold purpose for the, for the plagues that God brought upon Egypt. Some people might think that uh, you know it was it was it was too much and it was it was over over and above what what he could have done. Um, he could have just killed them all, <laughs> you know, and and uh, and been done with it, and his people could have left. But that wouldn't have taught Israel anything. And so the first thing that uh, that this was was a public demonstration of the mighty power of the Lord God. You know, th- they all thought they had gods. Uh, Egypt had had many gods. Uh, they had the the, the gods uh, of the river. Uh, the, they thought the river was a god uh, because the river was so great and so mighty. Uh, they thought that the sun was a god. And as a matter of fact, the name Pharaoh comes from uh, from the name Ra, uh, and uh, and that's that was what they called the sun. All right, and 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 so the they, God had to get everybody's attention, and he did so in, that, in those ten plagues. And, uh, and so the plagues were, uh, were to, to demonstrate what God could do if man doesn't obey. God will do those things. We're going we're to see a time uh, in the history of the world uh, that, well, we won't see it, but the world will see it. Uh, they will see the hand of God. They, they will know that he is God. But they won't until he's finished. All right, and so the second thing uh, is that the second of the sevenfold purpose of the plagues was God's wrath as a punishment of Pharaoh and his people for their cruelty to the Hebrews. I mean, they were cruel to them. They they were they were slaves. They they were being beaten by the taskmasters if they didn't get their quota done. They they were uh, they were in a in, in a serious situation, and they were crying out to the Lord for a deliverer to come, to be sent. And I don't know what they were thinking or what you know that that's it's sort of like. Uh, like the world, they're looking. For, we're looking for Jesus to come, but not today. Even though he's his coming is imminent, but we're not looking for him coming today. If we were, we would have been uh, winning souls today. We would have been telling people about Jesus. We may not have won any souls, but we would have told somebody. But how many did we tell today? Um, it, it's you know, it's not, it's as if we think. He's coming, but he's not coming today, so I'm, I'm okay. Uh, he wants us to work till Jesus comes. See, that song was perfect because his, his, he wants us to be working until he comes. And then the third thing is a, it's a judgment from God upon the, the gods, literally the demons of Egypt. It was a judgment of, of God upon those things. and the, and. Everything that came uh, was against what they, uh, they represented. And then number four, there, it is a, a demonstration that Jehovah was high above all gods. Every little town, every little place, every little city, every little people had their own little god. And I call him a little god because that's what he was, a little G god. He's not a big G god, which is like our Lord God. And 
in, in, in all of these things that we see, we see a, uh, a, a demonstration how, of how much greater God was than, than all the other gods. I mean, Pharaoh had his magicians and his, uh, his men, sorcerers and all, come out. And uh, for the first two of the plagues, they were sort of matching what Moses and Aaron were doing. Aaron threw the rod down. It became a snake. And the, the magicians, they threw their rods down. They became snakes. How did they do that? It was through the power of Satan. It was not through the power of God. And so, and so the, uh, and we, saw, we saw them, uh, uh, the, when the, the, the river was turned to blood, uh, they, they said that they had turned some water into blood as well. And they were all looking as if, the, you know, hey, you know, but we can do those things. We can do those things as well. But it was, it was a, just a demonstration that God was so much higher than any God of this world. And then they furnished a complete testing of human responsibility. Man was completely responsible to God in every single way. And then, number six, they were, they were a warning to other nations that God would curse those who cursed the Israelites. Uh, you know, you don't, uh, you don't get, uh, you don't get a, uh, a, a, what you, a pearl out of a sow's ear. Uh, you, you get what you give. If you give uh, love, you know, generally somebody will bring love back. But if you curse somebody, you be waiting. But when you curse God's people, when you curse them all, you're, you're going to be in a position of, uh, of, of being uh, tested by, of, of your responsibilities. What is the responsibility of man to obey every word of God? Every word of God to obey. If a man doesn't obey, I mean, you, you can't even get man uh, to obey the speed limits. You know, uh, stop signs. They've, they've got no clue what that red sign is with eight sides that says stop on it. Uh, I think they, they think it says stomp. Uh, on the gas and, and go on. But that's, you know, I saw one do that uh, as was, we were coming to church. There was this guy, he just comes up, uh, he hesitates a second. I mean, he didn't, even hardly, he, didn't, he didn't even stop rolling. He was already in the middle of the intersection before he gunned it again and, and was gone. And, uh, you know, and I thought, man, uh, he doesn't know what the word stop means. People need to learn uh, what the, the traffic laws are. But they also need to learn that, uh, you know, that they're not just there as suggestions. They're there as commandments. And we're just supposed to obey those things. You know, God wants us to obey even the magistrates, the, those that are over us. He wants us to obey them. Not, not in things that would, uh, would uh, be to uh, make it where we aren't doing what God has said in his word. But, but we ought to do uh, what we can to, uh, to obey the things that they, uh, that they, that they uh, dictate, even if it, uh, uh, if it means, uh, you know, we, we can uh, just be uh, sort of a, have you ever had one of those days? <laughs> Everything's going around in my head so fast that I can't even think of what I'm saying. I think I, I got my tongue over my eye teeth. And I can't see what I'm saying. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, and so uh, so it was. Uh, they furnished a, a complete testing of human responsibility. Man, God put responsibility on Pharaoh. He said, "Let my people go." He said it over and over and over again. And Pharaoh said, "Who is this Lord God? Who is this God that tells me?" to let the people go. And, uh, you know, and, and it, 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 he, found, he found out who that God was. They were a warning to other nations that God would curse those who cursed the Israelites. And then number seven, they were designed to be a series of tests for Israel. 
You know, Israel had to go through most of these things too. There were certain things that they didn't have to go through because God held it back from them. For instance, when the hail fell and it was so hard that it just destroyed every living thing on the, in the fields, God, God didn't, he caused it not to hail in, uh, in uh, Goshen where they were. And, uh, but there, there were other things that, that we saw that, uh, I mean, they had to be put up with the frogs too. They, they had to be put up with the frogs. And, uh, you know, there, there was the things that, that God said, now my people won't have to put up with this. They won't have to do it. But they had to learn as well to obey God. I mean, they weren't, they, you know, they had not been in the synagogue. There was no synagogue. And there won't be an, a synagogue for over a thousand years. And uh, the synagogue came during the time of uh, between uh, in those last 400 years when there was no prophet in the land. That's when the synagogue came about. And uh, the synagogue, in the synagogue, they, they used that for educating their children uh, in the law and in everything that was about it. And, uh, and, and their education came through the synagogue. Everything, they, their worship came through the synagogue. Everything was there. But they didn't have a synagogue. They didn't have anything out there. All they had was the, uh, what the people of the land used, were doing and what they could remember about what God, uh, God's uh, patriarch, the patriarchs, had told them that they should do, offer a sacrifice, circumcise the firstborn, circumcise all the, the male children, do, you know, do all these things, and uh, they would be right with God. So it was designed as a series of tests for Israel and and uh, Israel had to go through them as well. You know, when, the, when God judges the world, uh, he, he judges the church too. He, the, the church has to go through it too. When all of his judgments have come in, in times past, uh, they, they have come upon all of those that are believers as well. And uh, so those are the things that, uh, that we see that the purpose of the plagues uh, and they, they were something that was in, it meant to teach. And, uh, and, and so they did. They, they taught a great lesson to the, to the, Jew, to the, Israel, to the Hebrew people. And, and, and then the arrangement of the plagues. The arrangement of the plagues. You know, there, there was, God doesn't just, uh, just bring things up. And, oh, yeah. Oh, I, thought, I, I just thought about this. I think I want you to do this. You see, God, from the very beginning, has, has known what he's going to do uh, tomorrow. He's, he's, not, he's not waiting on man to do anything. He's already thought of it. He's already come up with it. It's already been decided, and he's, he's already got it working out in place. And so the arrangement of the plagues is interesting. Uh, it, the, the, uh, the tenth plague is separated from the first nine. Because of, uh, that it, uh, it it has a special relation to Israel and to their redemption, you know they they were they were there uh, and uh, they 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 were given the Passover feast during that tenth plague, and uh, it was during that time that they got uh, they 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 learned uh, about God's redemption. And uh, and what the blood could actually do, and so they were down. They were in their houses, eating the the Passover lamb, uh, and the 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 unleavened bread, and they had their shoes on their feet and their staffs in their hands. They had everything packed up and they were ready to go. And and then, uh, you know, God's in, at midnight, the death angel passed over, and uh, you know. And it and uh, there was there was mourning and gro groaning and and all sorts of things from I Egypt's uh, households, but from but why was there not any in e in Israel? It's because they had taken the blood of that little lamb that they were eating, and put it on the lintel of the doorpost and ab above the doorpost, and they were under the blood. And so it has to do with redemption. So that tenth plague is separated from the first nine. All right, and so 
uh, the, the, uh, the other nine are arranged in groups of threes. The first three was, uh, was the blood, the river turned to blood, and the, uh, the frogs. And then the, the third uh, was the, the dust turned into lice. And what those, those three represent, number one, uh, the, the first plague represents death because uh, the blood there. When, they, when you see blood, you think somebody's either been hurt real bad or, or they're dead. And, uh, and so they, there was enough blood there for everybody. And, and so then the second plague uh, was, uh, was the frogs. And the frogs are, and this is, this is sort of an interesting thing, the frogs are, are creatures of the night. When do you hear frogs? It's at night. You hear them croaking. You know, and uh, you know, and, and they represent a lot of things, but they represent darkness, the darkness. All right, and then the third plague was dust that was turned into lies, and that, that represents God's wrath. And we said that the third plague uh, was, was the, that uh, Pharaoh was given no warning as to what was going to happen in that, uh, in that time when the third plague took place. And uh, so, and then we see the, the second three is uh, swarms of flies, swarms of flies. And we looked at that, and, uh, and we said that, uh, that this had to do with the name Beelzebub, which means Lord of the flies. And so God is greater than Beelzebub. And, uh, and so the swarms of flies, and that, that represents the uncleanness of the world. And uh, the fourth pl- the, that's the fourth plague. And then the fifth plague was a deadly moraine or disease that kills the cattle. And all their cattle are dying, and they all just drop dead in the fields because of this deadly plague that came upon them. And, uh, and so there's the, the first five. And then the, the sixth plague is boils on man and beast, and it, and there's an interesting uh, that's an interesting thing about that. But uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And so the uh, the the first and the second plagues, uh, there there was no warning given. But then in the third, there there uh, God God just did it. He didn't he didn't bother to tell him, hey, this is coming, and everything else he had told them, you, you can expect this to happen, and yet they they didn't catch on. I don't know if Pharaoh was so smart. I know his, his, his people weren't. I mean, they, they all kept going right along with all these things, and, and then uh, they, they were happening to them, and then it took them a long time before they ever said, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, the light bulb went off in their head that, uh, you know, uh, why, are we letting the, why are you letting all these things happen to us, Pharaoh? I, we thought you were the great God, and he wasn't. All right, and, then, and so in, a, in addition to the first three plagues, uh, in the first three plagues, uh, Aaron uses his ro- the rod. It wasn't Moses he was using the rod, it was Aaron. So Aaron was doing uh, all these things. And uh, you know what? Uh, God, is, God is, is willing to use someone else as well. All right, and so uh, a warning precedes uh, each of the first two and then the fourth and the fifth of the plagues, and the sixth plague, uh, there was no warning given. In the sixth plague, there was boils on man, and they they uh, they were just covered with boils. Oh, what an awful thing! I've I've had a if you've ever had a boil, you you know what that's like, and uh, so you have to. Uh, we'll we'll just keep on moving from there. Amen. <laughs> Don't even want to think about it. Yeah. So and. Uh, uh, in the last three uh, of the plagues, God, uh, Moses uses the rod. And in, in some of them, he just raises his hand. So God doesn't have to use the rod, but uh, sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. All right, and so there, uh, there, there was a, there's an arrangement to these, these plagues. Uh, two plagues, that they, they're, they're given a warning. And then the third plague, no warning. Then the next two plagues, there was a warning given. And, the la- and then the next plague, there was none. And then it goes all the way down to 
when, when God brought that darkness over the whole land and there was, uh, there was, a, uh, uh, there was no warning given for that. Uh, and what kind of warning could you, you use? Because uh, there was darkness everywhere, except over there where Israel was, and they had, they had light in their houses. But nobody else had any light, and they could not see anything. Have you ever been in a dark room? I mean, I mean a completely dark room, and, and uh, you can't touch anything, you can't feel anything around you. You know, you, you touch yourself to see if you're still there. Uh, you know, you, you're trying to do that. They did that for three days. Complete darkness for three days. That, that, was, that should have gotten their attention. But there again, Pharaoh was, was not going to be uh, outdone. All right, and so we have uh, this, these three, uh, the, these threes that are, that are given to us, three threes and then the final one that uh, God gives. And so the arrangement of the plagues is an important thing as well. And then we have the in, uh, 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 what we call an uh, uh, outline or a diagram of, of these ten plagues, and it makes what we call an introversion. You start with A, and you go all the way down to E. That's five, five things. And then you start back with E, and you go back out to A, and each one of the A's correspond with each other, and the B's and the C's and the D's and the E's. And if you can look at this, uh, this diagram on the, on the page that we have, uh, you'll notice that the first plague was waters turned into blood, which represent death. Now, if you look down at the tenth plague, it was actual death of the firstborn. So the first one and the tenth one were related together to death. And then the second plague was frogs, creatures of the darkness upon the land. And the ninth plague was the extreme darkness for three days. And there we have the, the, dark, the darkness. And uh, the, so they, they are representative of darkness. And then the third plague was dust turned into lice, and we see God's wrath being taken. The eighth plague was thunder and lightning and hail, and that was God's wrath as well. But, but it's an interesting thing. When, uh, when the third plague took place, the, the magicians of of, uh, of Pharaoh could not, they could not do this. They could not make dust turn into lice. And you know what they came to him and said? They said, we can't do this. It's the finger of God. It's the finger of God. Who else saw the finger of God? It was, it was one of the, the Medo-Persian kings. And he was having a, a, a real a party for his people. And he looked up, and there was a finger writing on the wall. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, the, and it wrote in, the, in the, the, the language, many, many tickle you farsin, which meant you've been weighed in the balances and you ain't found want. Isn't that something? That's a, that's, that's a, that's a sad thing. But so we, we see the, the dust turned into lice, God's wrath on man. But they, they said, uh, this is the finger of God. But, but when the, that eighth plague, the thunder and the lightning took place, uh, that, that was the time that Pharaoh said this. He said, I have sinned against the Lord your God. And uh, so that's kind of like saying it's the finger of God. And yet, Man, uh, they, they didn't understand. And then, then the fourth plague was the swarms of flies, and, and the seventh plague was swarms of locusts. So you got flies. How many has ever been to Okefenokee Swamp? If you've been to the Okefenokee Swamp, you, you realize that they have these things called yellow flies. Now, they're not just like your common house fly. They'll bite the fire out of you. <laughs> I mean, they will... They'll hurt you. And then uh, so they, uh, they have these yellow flies and they just sting and they bite and they, they cause these big red whelps to come up on your legs and everything. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a pretty sight. And, uh, and so flies like that were all through the land, swarms of flies. 
in their houses, in their, in their, in their hair, in everything that, you know, there was this all over. It was awful. It was an awful thing. And, uh, and then there, there were swarms of locusts. Have you ever seen a locust? It's a pretty big, it's a big grasshopper. It's a big grasshopper, and it'll eat everything in its sight that's green. It'll eat everything, all right, right down to the ground. And God sent swarms of locusts into the land on an east wind. And, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, after he was finished with his plague, he caused a west wind to blow. And he blew them all out into the Red Sea, and they drowned. Isn't God good? He didn't leave, he didn't leave anything to, uh, to man's uh, dismay. The fifth plague and the sixth plague are, are both related to disease because the first one has a disease on the cattle. And uh, the cattle were being, uh, they were just dropping dead in the fields. Uh, you, know, uh, they, they, uh, you know, they have all these hoof and mouth disease, you know. They have all these diseases. If a cow gets it, it he, you might as well just go ahead and dig a big hole because he's not going to be uh, around too much longer. And all these, these plagues were there. And, uh, and, and the, the neat thing is that uh, when, when all of these were, were coming about, God uh, was taking care of his people. And so they, uh, there wasn't any dead cattle out in the land of Goshen, but they were all through the land. And, and, and this, make, this, this makes perfect sense why... Pharaoh in the ninth plague, he's going to, he's going to tell them, uh, uh, you you can go and your children can go with you, but you got to leave your cattle here. Why is that? It's because they didn't have any cattle. All their cattle were dead. They had been, they'd either been killed by the hail, or by the deadly moraine, or or or, or by the swarms of flies, or the lice, or all of these things that were going on. And by the way, frogs have, have poison in them that can kill a man. So I'm thinking that they didn't want to, uh, to keep them around too long because all the fro frogs just died where they were. And uh, there, was a, there was a stink in the land. And then, and then uh, so we, we have this introversion that's observed, and uh, all of this is teaching us uh, that, that God is a God of order. He doesn't just do anything haphazardly. He does everything in a, in a certain way, and, uh, and he expects us to do that too, to be uh, doing all of these things. But what's the moral significance of all these, these plagues? Well, the water turned into, into blood tells us how blood broods over this whole scene. Because see, is, Egypt is a type and a picture to us of the world system. This world that we live in, you know, we, we think, uh, well, you know, uh, everything's going along pretty good, and then, uh, and then suddenly there's this this uh, thing called inflation, and we and we we're, we're going through inflation, and the price of gasoline goes up to uh, who knows where, and uh, and the price of food is going up, and there's there's no baby food, and there's no no formula for the babies. I, I was in line in the grocery store yesterday, and this lady was in front of me, and she was buying as much as she could of all these things. And, uh, and, and, she, and I said, it's terrible that, uh, that you know, you have to stand in line to, do, uh, to get uh, baby food, uh, food for your little children. And uh, she said, you know where I came from? I said, no, where'd you come from? She said, I came from Atlanta. There's none in Atlanta. That, that she had to come out to... Centerville, uh, down down here, uh, uh, you know, just past Snellville, and uh, on, and and they didn't have any, and it, it's, it's a sad thing. So the 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 blood tells us that the death broods over this scene. The frogs suggest pride and sufficiency of the children of this world. They think they are sufficient to do anything, uh, and they get all blown up with their. What does a frog do? He, uh, you know, he he blow, blow, blows up this big bladder, and he and he uh, and and he makes this big croaking sound. And and what does that say? He's just all blown up. He's all about himself. 
it's all that he is. And, and so the frog uh, is, talks about how prideful man is. The lice speaks of the uncleanness and filth that comes from the lust of the flesh. The swarms of flies announce that the wicked are of their father, the devil. Beelzebub, the lord of the flies. And the, the moraine speaks of corruption of the natural man at his source. Co corruption. Man is corrupt. Why is he corrupt at his very source? It's because he has sin in dwelling in him. We have sin indwelling us. You say, well, I'm not a sinner. I've been saved. Well, you're just a sinner saved by grace. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and being a sinner saved by grace, that, that makes you uh, uh, ready to go to heaven, uh, but it doesn't mean you're not a sinner anymore. We're all sinners. We were, we've been sinners since we were born. We were born in sin. David said uh, in the Psalms, he said that I was conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. And, and yet he, uh, he, was, he was a man after God's own heart. But yet, he was still a sinner. And we're, we're still sinners, and that's what this is speaking of. All right, and so then the, uh, the boils and the blains speak of the unregenerate man, uh, the, the man who is uh, uh, not saved. And it, he's, he's just all corrupt on the inside, and it's making its appearance on the outside. You know, that's what, uh, that's what uh, the uh, leper is. It's a man who has a disease on the inside. And nobody can see that until it begins to manifest itself outwardly on his body. And then they know that he's a, he is. See, we're sinners because we have uh, the, the nature of our father, Adam. And he was the father of us all. Some people say, oh, no, there was no Adam and no Eve. Uh, I beg your your pardon, but I, I differ from you in that. I believe that, uh, that there was, that God made them. And it's easier for me to believe that than it is to believe that uh, one of the 179 different theories that y'all have brought about, not even close to making a proof of any of those things. And yet you believe it, you know. People believe it. Uh, they're taught in the schools to believe it. Uh, and, and I taught my kids uh, that they don't know what they're talking about, don't believe what they're saying, and they didn't. And then there's uh, the dense darkness shows the world is alienated from the one who is light. They, they, have, no, they have no light in them. There is no light in them, only darkness. This world is filled with darkness. This world is filled with people who walk in darkness. But we're not of the darkness, but we're of the day. And what is that day? It's the day of the Lord. It's the day that he brought, he brings for us. And so the death of the, uh, the, the uh, firstborn foretells of the second death that awaits all those who harden their heart against God. As you know, there's only one thing that, uh, that separates men from God. It's, it's their believing in him. I mean, just believing in the Lord. Believe in Him. And when, when they turn away and they say, I will not believe in the Lord, then they are denying Him and they are, uh, they are settling their own doom. It's not because they aren't told, because Romans tells us that even nature itself teaches us that there's a God. Even nature teaches us. But they don't, they don't look at nature in the same way that we do. And so we, we have this, the, the locust there, it represents spiritual barrenness in this world. This world is, is as barren as can be. You know, uh, the, uh, we're told in the scriptures that uh, uh, there's, a, there's a famine. There was a famine in the land. But it was, wasn't a famine of bread or, or water or whatever. But it was a famine of hearing the word of God. And there is definitely a famine of hearing the word of God in the world today. And, uh, and uh, we, we need to just keep telling the word uh, because it's the only thing that's going to help anybody. 
you know these 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 ten uh, these ten uh, plagues are even are will even be seen in the tribulation period. In the tribulation period, and so it's, it's the most striking prophetic forecast of the time of Jacob's trouble. It's an, <clears throat> by the way, the church is not going through the tribulation. Not through one minute of it. And you know why? Because it's the time of Jacob's troubles, not the time of the church's troubles. Some people might, they, they look at the, the church like, oh no, we're, we're just, uh, we've, we've taken over for Israel and we're, uh, we're the new Israel. Now where did you get that idea? You didn't get it from the word of God, so you must have gotten it from some, some uh, comic book that you read or something. Because it is not in the word of God. The most striking prophetic forecast of the times of Jacob's trouble. Israel <clears throat> shall be sorely afflicted. And certainly they were being sorely afflicted in the land of Egypt. And, and uh, they will cry unto God and he will answer. Just like God did in that day. In which they cried unto the God. You know what God did? He said, I got a plan, and he set that plan in motion. It took uh, 80 years for that plan to get really started. And then, and then when, when, uh, when uh, Moses was born, he wasn't quite ready yet to lead a people. So what did God do? He arranged that he would be into the house of Pharaoh, and he was it, lived in the house of Pharaoh for 40 years. And he learned all this stuff about leadership. And how to how to lead people, and uh, you know, and, and but he also learned about his people Israel, and uh, and so he learned about the Hebrew people as well, and he wanted to learn about them. So he went uh, he went out there, you know, he killed he killed the the Egyptian, and he hid him in the sand, and then the uh, the next day the Hebrew told him, I saw you doing this, and there they were. <laughs> he had a he had a problem, and uh, and uh, so he. He, he spent the next 40 years of his life out in, the, uh, and an, out in Midian. Uh, and he was, uh, he was, what was he doing in the land of Midian? He was learning how to be a shepherd, how to lead people. Leadership is not just in the, uh, in, in learned from uh, school books. Leadership's also learned from life experience, and that's what he needed. And he got that, and then, so, and then he still wasn't ready to lead Israel, uh, Israel. And, but God sent him out there, and uh, in the he he went through the ten plagues of there, and then at the end of the ten plagues, he was ready to go and lead his people. And it was, so that's at least eighty-one years later, and it, it it just shows you that the cry of God's people will be answered, but not in our time; it's in God's time because it took a long time for God to get Moses ready to do the work that he called him to. You know, when I was first called to preach, I, 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 you know, I, I, was, I was like a deer in the headlights, you know. Uh, my first message was six minutes, and uh, I thought I would never get through. I thought I would never be able to sit down, and, uh, you know, boy, I had made such a big mistake, you know, and God, and God wouldn't let me. And God wouldn't let me because he uh, had something else for me to do. So the cry of the people, will be, will, he will answer the cry of the people. And they're going to be crying because there's, there's going to be things going on in that seven years that are going to, uh, to cause them uh, extreme agony and pain. God will command their oppressors to let them go. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 6 says this. I think I have to find the right page here. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. You see, God, God is going to bring his children back. He, he will command his oppressors to let them go. Israel, he told that they should uh, pray that the uh, that the, the times 
don't come on the Sabbath or if, uh, for a mother that's with child because they're going to have to leave town like Israel left Egypt, and they're going to have to get out really quickly in the tribulation period. So he, uh, God will command their oppressors to let them go. God will send two witnesses to work miracles before their enemies. And what are these two witnesses? You know, we, we think we know who the witnesses are. Uh, we think they're Moses and Elijah. Or Moses and Enoch. Or who, is, who are these, these, these masked men <laughs> that are there that are uh, making this, uh, these, these people feel, feel so, uh, so uh, what, was I, what am I trying to say? So harmed in the world. And they, they, were looking, they were looking at these people like they were, they're really not good people. But you know, those two men, uh, they were doing miracles. They were doing miracles just like Elijah was doing and like Moses was doing. And they were, they were uh, uh, notice that uh, in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 11, it says this, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in, his, in this manner be killed. After this, uh, these have power to shut heaven, and it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Notice that uh, that's, that's almost like Moses and Aaron, the things that they were doing. Because he, he said that, uh, uh, you know, their, their enemies were going to perform uh, miracles as well. Revelation chapter 13 tells us that in verses 13 through 15. I'll let you look at those. God will execute sore judgments upon the world, and God will protect his own people from them, and water will again be turned into blood. And Revelation 8, 8 and 16, 4 through 5 tell us that. Satanic frogs will appear. They'll be coming out of the, the mouths of, uh, of uh, demons. A plague of locusts will be sent. God will send boils and blains upon the, the inhabitants of, of the world. Terrible hailstones will descend from heaven, Revelation 8, 7. There shall be an awful darkness, Isaiah 60 and verse 2 and Revelation 16, 10. By the way, there was an awful darkness that took place for three hours on Mount Calvary when the Son of God was dying for our sins. And then... As Pharaoh hardened his heart, so will the wicked in the day to come. Revelation 9, verses 20 and 21. Death will consume multitudes, Revelation 9, 15. And Israel will be delivered. Israel will be delivered. Zechariah 14, 3 through 4, and Romans 11, 26 tells us that. I got, I've got those, those mentioned there so, so you can look those up when you get home. And you'll see that all of the things that have to do with the tribulation also had to do with the ten plagues that were upon Egypt in the days of Moses. Isn't it wonderful to think that God thinks so far ahead in time that he brings things to pass that have already been? You see, there's nothing new under the sun. That's what the, the, prop, the, uh, the preacher said. Uh, Solomon in the, the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, that there's none, nothing new under the sun. All right, and so all of these things, and notice that there was two full pages of them just about in there. Uh, those are just the things that I found from one writer that talked about these things. No, no telling what other writers have written about these 10 plagues that are taking place. Next week, we're going to look at the, the fifth and the sixth uh, plagues, and we're going to see those. We, we really dealt with the first four last week, 
So we'll look at the next, uh, the, the fifth and the sixth plagues, and we'll see what, uh, what God is doing uh, in, in those people's lives and how God is, is manifesting himself to each and every one. God's, God's making himself known. And he'll make, he'll make himself known to you. And it might be after you have to get some kind of disease and you're laying on your back in the hospital and you can only look up to God. And it may be that, that that's, that's when he's got your full attention because obviously it's not easy to get the attention of this world. And God is going to do it. And he's going to do it again. In the, in the near future, if Jesus tarries his coming, It'll be seven years and one day away, you know, and then God will have his, uh, have his say in this world. They haven't gotten rid of God yet, and they will not get rid of him because he is God, and they are not. So let's pray. Father, we love you today, and we thank you for this uh, study. I pray that you'd just bless, and Lord, that you'd help us. As we look into these things, Lord, may, may, may they show us the things that, God, you're doing and you're, you're trying to get man to see and how you're trying to get our attention, Lord, and you want, to, want us to follow you. And, uh, Lord, I, I just pray that you would just help us and that you would bless us in this. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, thank you for listening in. If you've been online with us, I pray that... Uh, that the, everything came through all right tonight, but we're, we're just praying that the Lord will give you a blessing the rest of this week. We'll meet back together here on next Sunday morning, <clears throat> and uh, I, I hope you'll be here. We'll have a missionary in our Sunday school hour. You need to be here at 10 o'clock. Don't say, well, I don't need Sunday school. I, I've, I had Sunday school when I was a child. Uh, you know, if you know all the Word of God, then I can, you can, you know, and, and you have uh, you, you have uh, all knowledge, which you don't, <laughs> and that neither do I. And, uh, and so we, we need to come together, uh, but we need to be here for this missionary and for pastor as he preaches in the morning service and, uh, and then in the evening service. So, you know, it takes what, uh, what, the, what it takes is three to thrive, Sunday morning, Sunday night, eat, and Wednesday night. We ought to be here in God's house, and we ought to be doing what God wants us to be doing. Let's pray that the Lord would bless us and help us. And uh, so let's pray. Father, we love you today, and thank you so much for everything. In Jesus' blessed and holy name, amen. All right, Brother Jeff is going to lead us in.